Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Love Automotive. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another case study. Today, we're back out here at this car lot. It's another blistering hot day in Houston, Texas. Anyway, we got called out to take a look at this 2004 Lincoln Navigator. It's got the V8 5.4 engine, and the customer complaint is that this thing has a parasitic drain. Uh, what they're saying is that whenever they shut the vehicle off at night, in the morning, the battery's completely dead. It will not start up anymore. Anyways, you guys already know how we do it. Let's get started. All right, so first things first, let's see if this thing starts up. The key right here, I'm gonna try to crank it. As you guys can see, we don't have any battery power at all. The dash is not lighting up. So let me pop the hood and make sure that the battery is even connected. All right, so I managed to get the hood open. I actually did have a little bit of trouble trying to locate the latch or the release. If you guys are curious on these navigators, it's located right here above the passenger side headlight. Anyway, now that we got this open, we can take a look at our battery. And if you look, both of our terminals are connected. I will say though, this battery looks kind of small. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it looks like they've tried to replace this battery already, or maybe they had to because the other one kept dying. Uh, but this is not the original 65 series battery that belongs in this truck. That is beside the point. Um, you guys can see both of our terminals are connected. This one does seem a little bit loose. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's loose, but it's still making contact. I might try to tighten that or maybe this terminal. Yeah, it looks like it's already tightened all the way. So this terminal is probably no good anymore or this battery post is just worn out. Like I said, at this point, the battery is connected. It just looks like it's completely dead. So let me go ahead and grab a jump pack, hook it up and let's see if we can start this thing. All right, so I've got the jump pack connected. If you guys take a look at the battery, you can see that on the negative post, I went ahead and I stuck a little T-pin in between the post and the terminal. Uh, just so i can tighten it up old school trick anyway so i've got the cables connected here i'm gonna turn this jump pack on now let's try to start this thing all right so i've got the key i'm gonna stick it in powers up and it starts up now the main reason i wanted to start this thing up is because i did want to see whether or not the alternator was charging so let's move back under the hood and take a look at the multimeter on the jump pack here you guys can see that we're charging at 14.2 volts right now so that does tell us that the alternator is charging. All right, guys, so now that we know that our alternator is charging, we're gonna focus on doing an amperage draw measurement at the battery. As you guys can see, I have my lab scope over here, but before I connect it, there are a few things that I wanna do. Uh, first of all, I went ahead and I rolled the windows down because of course, if you need to gain access to the inside of the vehicle and you're trying to do a parasitic drain test on the battery, you don't wanna open the doors because doing that can wake up the modules. So what I do before I hook this up is I roll the windows down. So if I need to get inside, I can get inside. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to disconnect both of these terminals at the battery and I'm going to do the test utilizing the jump pack as my battery instead of the battery that's in the vehicle. And the reason for that is because I really don't know about the condition or the state of this battery. Again, when we got here, this thing was completely dead. So we don't know if it's possible that this thing could be internally shorted or there's some type of damage to the battery. We don't know, but either way, we don't want our terminals connected to it because we don't want it draining our jump pack. So it's better to just eliminate it out of the equation altogether. So again, I'm going to disconnect these terminals, hook up the hand meter, and let's see what we got. All right, so I went ahead and shut the engine off. Also, I went ahead and I loosened up these terminals, so I should be able to just pull them right off. Again, like I said, we are trying to eliminate this battery in our equation, and we are going to run this off of just the jump pack by itself. So now that I've got those off to the side, I can go ahead and connect the positive to just the terminal. Then before attaching the negative clamp to our terminal here, we're going to put our ammeter in series. So I've got my cables right here. You guys can see I have two alligator clips. One clip is going to go on the battery terminal here. Again, not the battery, but the battery terminal. And the other one is going to go on the terminal for the jump pack. So I'm going to clip it right here. Now, if I show you guys my lab scope up here at the top, you can see that I have it set uh, to the internal ammeter. Now, one of the things you want to do is make sure that this fuse on the back side of your meter is good uh, because we are going to be running current through this thing. I don't know if you guys can see it. Sorry for the glare on the screen, but if you look, it says amps internal right there. So we're going to click on that. And then we're going to see what our reading is. I know that's kind of hard to see, but it's showing zero at the moment. Let me check our jump pack. Okay, guys, so unfortunately, this is not going to work with the jump pack. I guess this jump pack in particular has some type of uh, internal protective device. And I guess it doesn't allow you to uh, 
uh, put out any power if whatever you're connecting it to doesn't have power already i don't really understand how this jump box really works uh, in order to do that but this just isn't going to work for what i'm trying to do and quite honestly this is not my jump pack this belongs to the owner of the car lot i didn't bring mine today because i actually used it to help my neighbor yesterday and i forgot it in my garage so i didn't bring my jump pack i know my jump pack would work with this because mine is just a basic old school one uh, this one here has some type of internal protective device so unfortunately i can't do this parasitic drain test with just this jump pack we're going to have to get a good battery in here so this battery either needs to be charged and tested before we can do this test or they need to get us a new battery so we can do this so let me talk to the owner and see what we can figure out a few moments later all right guys so fast forward uh, they went ahead and got me a brand new battery this is fully charged and i already went ahead and i connected my amp meter in series so if you look over here i've got uh, one of my leads connected to the battery terminal over here i have the other lead connected to the post itself and on the positive side i have it connected all together so taking a look at the meter now it's been on here for about uh, 15 minutes or so sorry about the glare i know it's kind of difficult to read but if you look right now we're at 0 0.660 milliamps so about 660 milliamps now like i said uh, this has been connected for about 15 minutes now none of the accessories are on like I said, I did leave the windows open so I can get inside if I need to because uh, looking at it now, I don't really see a fuse box on the outside here. So, uh, man, I might have to jump in through the window to gain access because I think that the fuse box is actually on the passenger side down in here where the kick panel is. Uh, but we'll wait till we get our final reading. Like I said, it's been about 15 minutes, but if you guys have ever worked on these Fords and done parasitic drain tests, I've been fooled by these before. These things can take upwards of around 45 minutes to maybe even an hour before all of the computers actually go to sleep. So at this point, I'm going to let this thing sit for another half hour or so, and I'm going to come back and take a look at it. And we're going to see if our reading has dropped. Again, we're at 600 milliamps. And really what we want to see is no more than around 50 milliamps maybe give or take you know i wouldn't be surprised to see maybe 60 or 70 milliamps on the high end but you really don't want any more than that 50 milliamps is our goal we don't want any more than that so like i said we're gonna wait about half an hour come back and see what our reading is one hour later all right guys so fast forward it's actually been over an hour now it's probably been about an hour and 20 minutes i actually had some other work to do on another vehicle over there so um, i kind of got tied up with that anyway we're back take a look at the lab scope or at the meter i know it's kind of hard to see but hopefully you can make out that we're still at around 400 milliamps so we're definitely pulling more amperage than we should at this point all of the computers should be asleep on the vehicle there's no reason why we should have that much of an amperage draw now again like i said uh there are no fuse boxes outside underneath the hood like i was hoping or anticipating the fuse box is actually located on the passenger side over here down in the footwell so i may have to jump through the window so i can start pulling some fuses but if i do that i might have to have somebody standing out here to let me know when our amperage drops as soon as i pull the fuse that is powering up that circuit so let me climb in through this window and see if we can do this all right guys so i managed to crawl inside the vehicle the fuse box is located down there and again what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull each fuse one at a time and i've got somebody standing outside that's going to let me know if whenever i pull a fuse we drop an amperage i don't know if i'm going to be able to catch this on camera i'm going to set it up right here and then i'm going to again like i said just pull these fuses so i'm going to start up here at the top any change did it change roger no no change i'm going to put it back in Oop. trying to put this fuse back in I mean, it won't go in i can't find the hole i'm gonna have to put that back in later let's try this one here any change nope. stick it back in any change nope. stick it back in any change nope. stick it back in any change the whole screen went blank? Yeah, it's the damn battery. Damn it. 
All right, guys, sorry about that. My meter died, so I had to switch out the battery. Let's continue where we left off, which was this 20 amp. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it. Any change? No. Next one. Any change? No. Oh, guys, sorry, there's a cup holder. that's digging into my chest over here. Anything? No. The problem with this technique is that sometimes when you take a fuse out and you put it back in, uh, you might not see an amperage drop. You might actually see an amperage rise. And that's just because you may have woken up one of the computers in the vehicle. So right now I'm just waiting for the amperage to go back down. I got my partner outside watching the meter, letting me know when it drops. Okay, it just dropped. Pull, pull the next fuse. Yeah, I'm about to pull the next fuse. Anything? No. Okay, so we got our amperage spike again. Okay, just let me know when it goes back down. Keep waking up modules. Sucks. It's back it's back to 400 okay anything no change, no change? okay oh, man this is a really bad angle i can't see how to put these fuses back in this is really bad for my back let's try this again okay i got the fuse back in next fuse any change roger no change? No change. All the blood is rushing to my head. I'm trying to get the fuse back in. Hold on. This is a terrible fuse box. Oh my God. Why would you put fuses way back here? Any change? No. No change. Oh, I don't know if I got it back in the right hole. I'll check it later. One hour later. All right, guys, so first of all, let me start by apologizing. I had to fast forward again because, you know, I was in here pulling fuses and quite honestly, I just, I couldn't do it anymore physically. I was upside down crammed into this area trying to pull fuses from that fuse box over there and, and it was impossible for me to do it. So I ended up having to just open the door and because the door jam switch is built into the door latch, I went ahead and I used a screwdriver to close the latch so that I could leave the door open but this meant that I had to uh, let this thing sit for another 45 minutes. So like I said, I apologize. This is about an hour later. And if you take a look at the meter, you can see that we're back down to where we were before, basically 411 milliamps, which is still too much. So I'm going to move back inside. I'm going to continue pulling the rest of the fuses and hopefully I can find the fuse that's feeding our power drain. Let's continue where we left off. It's gonna be right here. Any change? No change? Any change? No change. Any change? No change. Any change? Drop, 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 drop. It dropped? It dropped down to 15? All right, so we found our drop. Let's take a look at the diagram and find out what fuse it's for. All right, guys, so as you can see, when I pulled out that 15 amp fuse, take a look at our meter. You can see that we're down to 15 milliamps. So, Whatever we pulled out, we definitely know that that's where our problem is. Now, if we take a look at the diagram here uh, in the owner's manual, uh, it was fuse number four, which is what I pulled out. So right there, uh, fuse number four. So if we take a look here, uh, fuse number four, which is a 15 amp fuse, it says rear seat audio controls, navigation module, and DVD player. Rear seat audio controls, navigation module, and DVD player. Okay, so let's go ahead and move to the back of the vehicle here and see if maybe we have an issue with something staying on back here take a look now i did already look i know the dome lights and everything were off because i could visually see that nothing was coming on with the doors closed but if we take a look we have this dvd player up here and down here we have what looks like some controls for the audio volume we also have ac controls down here but i don't think those are going to matter really we're more focused on the volume buttons here and this dvd player now of course because we have the fuse out none of this is going to be powered on so let me go ahead and stick the fuse back in and take a look at all this stuff and see if there's anything that's staying powered up all right so i managed to reinstall the fuse uh, one other thing i might add is that this does not come equipped with navigation units so i'm not worried about the navigation module now that we have the fuse back in, if you take a look at the meter here, uh, you can see we're off the charts. And that's actually because uh, I opened up the rear door. I did close the latch on it, but because we opened up the rear door, you know, we woke up all the modules in the car. So that's why we're showing a lot of amperage on the meter right now. We're not going to worry about that. Let's take a look 
at our unit up here. It doesn't look like anything's on. The screen's not coming on. So I don't see anything that's obvious right now. I don't know, it doesn't look like anything here is giving us any real issues. Open this thing up, take a look inside. We have a little auxiliary port right here, but there's nothing connected to it. So I don't think that's gonna be a problem. Okay, so right now there's nothing obvious that's staying on. I think at this point, I'm gonna have to pull up a wiring diagram and see what else this fuse might power. All right guys, so I've got the wiring diagram pulled up for the power distribution. If you take a look right over here, I've already gone ahead and located our fuse number four. It's labeled F1.4, it's a 15 amp fuse. And if you follow this out on this red and yellow wire, you can see the different components that this fuse powers. Uh, but first of all, if we look right here, you'll see this little dot. This is indicating that we have a splice in the wiring. And at this point, our power feed is going to spread off in different directions. So first of all, if we follow it straight down, you can see that it powers up the DVD player. And if you follow it back over this way to the right, you'll notice that uh, it goes into this dotted box. Now, if you take a look at uh, the right-hand corner down here at the bottom, it's telling us that anything within the dotted box is with the navigation system. If you guys recall, this vehicle is not equipped with factory navigation. So we know we don't have to worry about anything that's inside of this dotted line or in this box. So we're going to ignore everything over on this side and we're gonna follow the splice over to the left and we'll follow it down and you'll see it continues on letter A, which is actually on the same page. So if you look right here, our letter A is our continuation. And if we follow it down, again, we run into this dotted box. But once again, there's a note here telling us that this dotted box is for the expedition with the navigation system. Once again, we do not have navigation, so we don't have to worry about what's in this dotted line. Uh, so if we follow this continuation down, you can see the other component that this powers up is going to be the rear integrated control panel. If I'm not mistaken, I do believe that these are the controls or the switches on the back of the center console. So according to this wiring diagram, there really are only two components that we need to worry about. Uh, first one is going to be our DVD player and the second one is going to be the rear integrated control panel. So I think at this point, the next thing that we should try to do is move over to the vehicle and try disconnecting each one of these two components and seeing whether or not one of them is causing our amperage draw. So whenever we disconnect these components, if we see a drop in amperage, then we know that that component more than likely is at fault. And that's going to be where our problem is. Now it is still possible that if we disconnect both of these components and we don't have an amperage drop or we don't see our amperage draw go away, it's possible that we still could have a problem in the wiring, maybe a short to ground, something that's causing this circuit to draw power even while the vehicle is off. So now that we have a game plan, let's move back to the vehicle and do our checks. All right guys, so moving back over to the vehicle, let me show you real quick. I went ahead and I removed the back panel here on the center console where our rear control unit is. But before I disconnect that, let me show you the meter. I went ahead and I reinstalled the fuse. I let the vehicle sit for another 45 minutes or so. So it looks like everything is back to sleep. You can see we're back at that 400 milliamp mark. Again, too much of a draw. So what we're expecting is that whenever we connect one of these rear units, we're hoping to see our amperage drop and that's going to tell us where our problem is. So we're gonna start by disconnecting this rear module. Let me pull this thing out. There we go. Now that we have that disconnected, let's move back under the hood, take a look at our meter and see what we got. We actually did have a drop here. We're looking at about 355 milliamps. Not really what I was expecting though. That's not where our problem is. So I think at this point we can probably rule out an issue with that rear control unit. I think the next easiest thing is to go ahead and remove this DVD player and see if we can disconnect it. I'm not really sure how to remove it. Oh, looks like we have four screws that hold this thing to the roof. So let me go ahead and remove those screws and see if we can pull this DVD player down. So after removing the four screws, they were 5.5 millimeters. Now, I think we can just kind of yank down on this thing. I might need two hands for this. Oh, there we go. Woo. All right, guys, so I got the DVD player down. Just a couple of clips that were in there pretty hard. But now that we got this thing down, let's go ahead and disconnect this and see what happens. Oh, these connectors. 
Come on. Ow. Okay, got it out. I'm just going to set it off to the side here. Now that we have this disconnected, let's move under the hood and see what we got. Let's see here. And bam, we got it. We are down to 15, 19 milliamps, way below where we want it to be. Like I said, we don't want to see any more than 50 milliamps. As soon as we disconnected that DVD player, bam, we're down to 15. So we definitely know we have a problem with that DVD player. Let's take a look at it. I don't know if maybe we can see if there's any water intrusion or anything here. Take a look at the connector. I don't see any corrosion. Don't see anything that looks like it's chewed up. I'm not really sure what to tell you, but at this point, we definitely know that our problem is internal to this rear DVD player unit. So at this point, we just need to see whatever the customer wants to do, whether or not they want to try to source a new one, or if they just want us to go ahead and you know, put it back up without connecting the connector because that would fix the problem if they don't ever use this rear DVD player. So let's talk to the customer and see what they say. All right, guys. So after talking to the owner of the vehicle, he's telling me he doesn't want to replace the unit. He just wants us to go ahead and reinstall it without plugging it in, mainly because they don't ever watch it anymore. He's saying that his kids are grown and the grandkids don't ever watch it. They're always on their separate tablets. So it seems like kids nowadays don't ever want to watch the same program. They each want to watch whatever they want to watch on their separate tablets. So it seems to me like DVD players like this are kind of getting phased out. Anyway, like I always say, thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you find it useful. I hope you find it educational, entertaining. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.